Jerry, things are absolutely wonderful. The streets of Cleveland are coming alive with fans absolutely excited for game one of the American League Division Series between the Cleveland Indians and the Boston Red Sox. Obviously, October baseball is the goal every season that you want to get to. And it wasn't too long ago these fans were lining the streets for the Cavs parade. After six hours, 19 innings, and nine pitchers, the Cleveland Indians broke the franchise record for the longest win streak. It took more than two ball games worth of innings to do it, but the Windians got the 2-1 to one win over the Blue Jays to make history, and today the Tribe look to continue their winning ways. Coming into today's final round of the Bridgestone Invitational, Jason Day and Scott Piercy were tied for first, both at 5-under. We had to fire Stone in Akron. Toledo native and Rogers High alum Eric Knard looking to make it back to the Olympics for the second time, competing in the trials out in Eugene, Oregon. A lot of frustrations, but he says now is the time to refocus his team, have a sense of urgency, and get back to those good habits they showed in games two and four. The annual Brandon Fields football and cheer camp was earlier today. Fields is a St. John's alum. He played at Michigan State before going to the NFL to play for the Dolphins and then the Saints. After breaking the franchise record for the longest win streak, the Toronto Blue Jays put an end to the Indians' winning ways with a 9-6 to win last night. Now the question is, will the Tribe bounce back to take the final win in the four-game series? The Indians and Tigers kick off game one of their three-game series. It's the fourth time Cleveland and Detroit have faced each other this season. And so far, the Indians have absolutely dominated the Tigers. Check out these numbers. Over the past five Sundays, we've showed you stories of athletes who still like to compete no matter their age. Tonight we finish our series with the Glass City Rollers, women in their 40s and even 50s loving roller derby. It's been 52 years since Cleveland's had a championship, but it's been since 1948, almost 70 years since there's been a parade like the one we saw today to celebrate this title. And as you can see, this is the aftermath of what's left after those 1.3 million people were here to celebrate with the Cavs. And it wasn't just an exciting day on the golf course. Plenty of action from the boys of summer today as well. Mud Hens fell to the Clippers 8-4. to As for Detroit, Michael Fulmer on the mound for the Tigers. And what better way to spend the holiday weekend than to find out you'll be representing the red, white, and blue in Rio. Otsego grad A.J. Digby was at the Paralympic trials in Charlotte, North Carolina the past few days. Dan, it was obviously an exciting night for Springfield A. practice you were looking for your offense to do some things they didn't do last week did you see a better performance this week dan it's amazing what a rivalry can do divide couples split households and even friends but this next family takes that rivalry to a whole new level Big night down here at Fifth Third Field. Two big name players in the lineup tonight for the Mud Hens. Jordan Zimmerman getting his second rehab start on the mound. And J.D. Martinez back in the lineup as well tonight. Both men are getting closer to making it back to Detroit. Check this out. Last week at the PGA Bridgestone Invitational in Akron, the Cavs hardware on display. And guess what? The NBA Championship Trophy will be at Highland Meadows this week for fans to see. Final round of the Marathon Classic at Highland Meadows and for the first time ever it was on network television we have the coverage for you on WTOL and what a finish it was everyone hoping to be holding that trophy Indians have a six and a half game lead on the Tigers best record in the American League finishing their series in Kansas City and is any rookie having a better year than Tyler Nate week two of the NFL season is underway Browns Lions Bengals and Steelers all in action today start with Cleveland's home opener with Baltimore Josh McCown gets the start in the pocket for the Browns. And believe it or not, somebody is actually interested in Johnny Manziel. It's no. not the NFL. But earlier today, the Arena Football League announced they would give him help and opportunities both on and off the field. The biggest question coming into Notre Dame's media day is who will be in the pocket come game one? Will it be Central Catholic alum Deshaun Kaiser returning as the signal caller for the second season? Or will it be Malik Zaire making a comeback from his injury? Head coach Brian Kelly says both are strong players with slight differences, making his decision a tough one. In his second start on the mound for the Mud Hens, George 
Jordan Zimmerman's focus was to up his pitch count, and he did. 78 pitches, 48 of those strikes in four innings of work. He had one strikeout and allowed six hits and two runs. And he says after this performance, he feels he's ready to head back to Detroit. For first-year head coach Mike Jinks and the Bowling Green Falcons, a 77-10 loss to the Ohio State Buckeyes wasn't an ideal way to kick off the 2016 season, but Coach Jinks has a positive outlook on the game, hoping his kids keep working hard and get all the bad things out of the way. And quarterback James Kanapke says he hopes the leadership of this team learns from this loss. Well, Jerry and Emily, just moments ago, Tim Tebow himself arrived right here at the University of Toledo's Savage Arena. He was all smiles, definitely looks like he's looking forward to tonight's event. Now, the former Florida quarterback and NFL quarterback has been make a public figure for a long time. He first really jumped on the stage back in 2009. Danielle, what do you got for us? Jordan, you're really missing out on a great party. I am here in the hometown of Michael Geiger. Now, I shared his story when I caught up with him earlier this week, just talking about how he's getting ready for tonight's big game against Iowa. I am here in his hometown, Ottawa Hills, here with Peter and Lisa Dewhurst and their daughter. Uh, they are hosting this lovely party now. Tell me, you know Michael Geiger from when he played soccer when he was at high school here in Ottawa Hills, and now he's up at Michigan State on this big stage. Tell me what that's like to see that. And some Ohio State football news coming out of Columbus today. Buckeyes running back Briante Dunn has been dismissed from the team in three seasons with the Buckeyes. Once his senior track season is all said and done, AJ will be heading to Charlotte, North Carolina to compete in the Paralympic trials at the end of June with hopes of earning a spot to Rio. Reporting at Otsego High School, Danielle Dwyer, WTOL. 11. Austin Taylor came up in extra innings to get the clutch hit to center, giving the Bulldogs the 3 to 2 walk-off win over the Baden Rams, and with the win, they clinched their third title in 4 years. In efforts to stop sports rage, the Mommy Little League, which is the only local organization whose teams can qualify to play in the Little League World Series, came up with this sport parent code of conduct form that every parent has to sign before their child can play. After nearly 3 hours, St. Francis's Greg LaRue walked away with with the number one singles title, putting a stop to a potential sweep for St. John's. But that didn't stop the Gandy brothers, Hunter and Braden, from achieving their goal of spreading awareness about cerebral palsy all the way from Bedford, Michigan, to right here at the state capitol in Lansing, Michigan. Jordan, as the walleye gets set for game five tonight, it becomes a brand new series. It becomes a best of three with two of those games happening right here at the Huntington Center. Now, over the years, Mobile Meals of Toledo has been providing meals to hundreds of people people throughout the Toledo area, but today marked a new venture and it's using basketball as a way to feed Toledo youth. Even though fans are disappointed, they have to wait one more day to see the tribe in action. They say they have high expectations for the season. Zero days until opening day. Well, not quite. Add one more day to that list as today's game was postponed and rescheduled to be played tomorrow afternoon. And for one fan who came hundreds of miles to see today's opening day game, well, it's a short-lived trip for him. Well, it's a huge day for wrestling here at the state tournament in Columbus. The Schottenstein Center is filled floor to ceiling with fans from all over the Buckeye State, all here to support the many wrestlers who have put in the hard work all season long to get to this point in Northwest. Ohio was well represented. Rogers coming into tonight's game looking to punch that ticket to Columbus for the third straight year going up against Ottawa Glandorf here in Ontario and it was a game that was a battle from start to finish literally coming down to the final second. But it's not just the men's team that's achieving success. The women's team is also getting the job done on the ice as they too are ranked second overall in the nation and have the number one seed heading into this weekend's conference tournament. The Finley High School gymnastics team is getting ready for the state tournaments this weekend. And for one junior, it's a competition that's all too familiar. With it being like home, does that, do you feel it helps um, your game when it comes tournament time? And stellar boxing's going on in the Glass City right now. Quite the lineup at the pro level. Robert Easter Jr., Sonny Fredrickson, Tyler McCreary, and let's add one more to the unbeaten fighters list, Wesley Tucker. The 28-year-old is currently 12-0 as a pro. It took six hours and 19 innings. Right there it is. But the Indians broke the franchise win streak record with their 14th straight win. Now that was last night. 
Today, the Windians look to continue their winning ways. We go to the top of the seventh here. And in just a little over a week, the LPGA Marathon Classic will be in action at Highland Meadows in Sylvania. Now, the question is, will the Tribe bounce back to take the final win in the four-game series? We go to today's game and Corey Kluber on the mound for Cleveland. But it was a rough start for the righty. Congrats to him. Wow. And uh, that's it for sports. Isn't that exciting? A local so guy making it to Rio. Yeah. Absolutely. What a great accomplishment. The new AP Top 25 poll is out. After a dominating win right there in Norman, Oklahoma, Ohio State moves on up to number two in the poll. Michigan remains at number four after beating Colorado. Both teams are 3-0 and this season. Buckeyes have a bye week while the Wolverines are at home with Penn State. And after placing in the top five in two events at the 2016 Rio Paralympics at Segograd, A.J. Digby is back.